good luck. All right, so we're not going to bungle on move three like we did yesterday. That would be extremely unfortunate. Um, so instead, um, we're going to play our silver up here and the bishop there, and things are going to be okay. Play a nice calm, closed position, and not worry about absolute nonsense breaking out in the opening. Um, so this is one, two, three squares away, which is like three squares too far for me to strike anytime soon. Even if, like, my silver did start approaching this, the knight theoretically could defend against that. Okay. Yeah, I have to refresh my memory how the crap this works again. Um. So. I could play my rook to third, fourth, or second file here. Historically, I've usually played it to the second file. Um, how does this go? I should calm down just a little bit, enjoy some of my water. Try to remember what exactly I usually play here. I think opposing rook is just fine. <sighs> if not, my memory is just failing me. And we'll find out momentarily, but um, Yes, our opponent has not tried to shuffle their king out of the center just yet. So I don't get this tempo gaining move with this bishop discovery, bishop takes, center pawn check, uh, with the rook attacking the rook. Like, this shot is not going to be present, even if otherwise it would. Okay, now <laughs> this tactic I was just talking about suddenly is possible. Um, but even so, like, this isn't the right position to shoot for it. Um, so if I push, say we do exchange, let's say I, like, do bishop takes, they just move their king. And then my bishop's pinned, I could move it back to offer a rook exchange, but the timing of this is very suspect. Um... I'd be better served uh, to have my king tucked away a bit in the corner before I pursue anything too aggressive. This isn't chess where you could just play ridiculously aggressive stuff at the beginning of every game and tend to get away with it. You have to strike some balance between defending your king, building some sort of castle for it, and whatever sort of attack you're planning. Um, so usually I 
put the king on 2-8 here first and then bring the silver up. Here I'm not quite feeling that. I'm actually going to tuck my king behind my silver because my opponent's attack is a little not the fastest. Um, because they've taken time to move their king twice, I can do this. Like I said, there's a delicate balance between attack and defense. And here I'm attempting to save a tempo on castling. Where normally you'd have to move the king twice and then push up the silver. Now I'm going to just put the king behind the silver to guard the square in front of the knight. And the only weakness here is that if somehow this instant a pawn exchange happens, um, I'm not set up to defend against that. But I don't see how they liquidate a pawn this instant. So my next move can be bringing the king back, and I think everything's going to be fine. Um, what I should have spent more time reading out is silver 7-3, and whether or not that forces me to push this pawn forward. If it does, then that's then I'm in some trouble. <laughs> um, but I don't think it requires me to do that. Oh, the other thing that I've been neglecting is perhaps a gold lift. That I'm not so sure about, though, because if I lift my gold, then they try to open the seventh file. And I can't oppose rooks on the file anymore. It's like, literally, once my king is behind the silver, then I'm okay with a rook exchange but not before then. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, we're going to continue this defensive idea. Um, this is... Okay, yeah, I was curious if they were going to push this twice. Um, note that my king is one... For, uh, move faster to escape than normal from Mino Castle. So there's advantages and disadvantages to this. Um, all right, so um, is now the right time for me to offer a Rick exchange? Am I positioned, like, do I need to lift my gold to guard the square here? Uh, and if I do, where else might they drop a rook? Uh, like, right here where my gold currently is, a rook drop could happen. And then I'd have to rook drop to defend against it, but then I take the silver. Um... Yeah, it's not super clear. Oh. Maybe I need to think about moving my bishop. Um... Not sure how painful a bishop exchange is for me. Also, would I prefer to go in front of my silver here, or would I prefer to go over here instead? 
Um, I'm not sure. Where does my bishop go? All right, so this is a common idea, although this blocks my silver. I should, like, right before I make a move, double check, does this completely ruin one of my pieces? Here, this makes my silver miserable. Although it wasn't going anywhere anyway, I could pretend that someday it might have been threatening to go somewhere. Now it's just miserable, and it's ultimately going to go back uh, to defend this pawn. Or it's just going to hold this thing together. But yeah, this does make my bishop happy. It's just the silver is going to be quite unhappy about this. Or immobile. Um... Unless I drop it back and start walking it forward this way. But that, like, doesn't seem to get very far. Well, it seems we're both puzzled about this position. Um, I'm puzzled because he's not completing the boat. And he's also not raising the silver. So I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm supposed to be doing um, while they continue trying to decide or define what their castle is. Um, just dawned on me there's another possible idea they might be planning, which I'm none too thrilled to see, but, um, it's better that I see it now than later. What do I do about this idea? This, like, supposing this is the idea, what do I do about it? Okay, it's not the idea. It is an idea, but it's not the current focus. So we're going to find a way... Am I complicating things overly much? Like, is my bishop retreat and advance that terrible of an idea here? No, I really like this idea. So, 
if it's terrible, then that just reflects on my sense of judgment. Um, what I like about this is that now I can bring my rook to the third file and offer an exchange here. Also, my bishop is going to be active, um, striking whatever happens to be on this diagonal. Um, and it's not going to be in the way of my rook. So that's kind of where I'm thinking at the moment. While they continue pushing a lot of pawns, I can reposition my pieces to more effective squares. The reason I say I might be overthinking this is because also, like, in opposing rook, I should consider offering a rook exchange. But here, I really... somehow that idea doesn't appeal to me. Like, their rook invades my camp, and their camp is very solidly fixed in place. So I'm thinking a rook exchange on the second file, or eighth file here, is not what I should be offering. I'm also trying to figure out, is there a better place to put some of my pieces here? Right, so this was kind of unavoidable, but um, I kind of have a hard counter to... Well, I have two counters to that. The first and most obvious is the bishop out, pitting the silver, for, at least until these two pieces move out of the way. The second counter is that I actually, like, push this 8th file pawn now that the center pawn's undefended. Um, and third possible counter would be if I just bring my rook over one and try to break on the 7th file instead. Um, I do have another idea. Okay, let's put this on a good square. I'm calling this a good square, so it must be good, right? Um, if they bring the silver forward like I predict they will, um, then the silver's going to stay here for a while. And therefore, the square in front of it could be a good square to deploy a piece. Um, and I have just the piece in mind. It gets complicated, but we might be looking at a sacrifice soon. More likely they don't advance the silver right away, but they play something cautious, and we try to come up with something aggressive. Okay, this I did not expect, because now they have to have something babysitting the pawn. Um, same way that my rook is babysitting this pawn. Um,
Okay, I'm going to see if they block their bishop or not. I'm open to the possibility of a bishop exchange because there are targets my bishop could hit. And I seem to be defending relatively well against a bishop at the moment. Um, unless I actually look at the one obvious threat. Um, and if I look there, then this is not so great. But hey, this felt good. So. Ah, there's a saying that if you offer, if you push the center pawn, don't offer a bishop exchange. I just violated a shogi proverb. So we're going to be looking at a horse in just a second and trying to figure out how to fight against it. Um, I mean, this still could be maybe my best move, but. Um, would have made sense if I just didn't have the blind spot right before I moved. I thought my bishop had this covered, and it did, and it no longer does. So. Yeah, it's complicated now. I'm not even sure that them having a horse fundamentally changes anything because there aren't a lot of good scores for it to go to. And this bishop on this long diagonal is very effective, so like this could still maybe be best, but I'm asking for trouble. So I should not be too surprised when trouble arrives. I'm going to get checked, and it's going to get painful. Maybe it'll get better sometime after it gets painful. So if they check me, maybe I raise my gold up, and they retreat, and I do a bishop drop and promote my bishop. Um, alternatively, maybe I run away, and then if their bishop moves to escape, only then, yeah. Actually, that's fine. So my king retreating from this check is just fine. Unless I get mated somehow. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, this hits directly at my two weakest points. Um, well? Interesting. Yeah, this seems to account for everything that I did not account for. Um, okay, this hopefully makes some things better, although it makes one particular other thing worse. I no longer guard against a bishop drop at the foot of my rook. Um... Okay, that's a bit crazy, because there's only one piece that can defend that pawn. Um, I mean, that's a tempo-saving move if there is one, but goodness, that's a bit risky. Um,
It's difficult to play patient moves when I'm unsure what to do. But a patient move might just be the thing I need here. It sounds horrible. I don't like the sound of it at all. Um... Okay, we're going to go hunting this sil uh, bishop. My silver is going to move forward. And we'll use this somehow to try to open the position where it's advantageous for us to open it. I guess alternatively, I could have just dropped my bishop back here to hit that, which would have been smart. But since when have I played smart moves? So my large idea here is to reclaim this long diagonal on the board and try to break in the center in a meaningful way. Um, that's my first idea. I probably should have pushed this pawn before hitting the bishop. Although pushing this pawn seems to like invite all the problems I'm trying to avoid. Well, if I can push this, then I can push that, and then this moves, and then I can bishop drop and promote way back here. Okay. What? I don't understand. I have to take it. At this point, I have two bishops. And they are forcing their way in. Fine. Stuff's going to get real here in a second. Oh, so if I bishop drop to defend this, well, one, they could just take the gold. That's possible. Um, hmm. I'm trying to find some scheme by which I win this knight. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get both bishops on the board in one move. Okay, we're going to attack while our opponent is attacking. 
And this is a mutual attack. So worst case, they've sacrificed a bishop for a general, and I have to sacrifice my gold back if it gets surrounded somehow. That's the worst case scenario is that I'm giving back the gold and just crawling back home with my tail between my legs. Um, best case scenario is we checkmate that king. So... Um, Average case scenarios, something else happens. Like, say we get to promote somewhere. Oh, right, they get to promote as part of this retreating move. All right, fine. Kind of like my gold up here. So my idea is that I was going to use my bishop to support this gold in an attack. Um, and if necessary, bring up another bishop to support it. Or maybe a bishop drop right next to their king or something. Like, I could even potentially bring the rook up and over, which looks crazy until you're halfway done doing it, and then it looks okay. Um... Probably should have broken in the center, though. I have so many ideas, and I'm not keeping tracking, track of them in any meaningful way. Um, So I want to promote my bishop back here, and then use it to start attacking their king. I get that they very much want to have a dragon. I get that. And, you know, I might just let them have that, because I'll have a horse or two. It'll be okay. We'll get a dragon king and a dragon horse, and see um, how this plays out. So if they do nothing, I just take here, gold takes, and then bishop drop forks. So they choose not to do nothing. Um, So, as we go into Biyami, how do we want to play this? If I do nothing, they take my pawn, and I have no initiative. Oh, if I pawn drop here, this guy backs away, or he comes forward. Either way is fine. I forgot they could just take my pawn. <laughs> um. So this is a bit greedy on my part. Um, yeah, I'm going to have some real problems in just a second. Is 
Perhaps I should have exchanged here directly. I was concerned that would somehow give a tempo that I need, but um, that I, rather that I can't have spend a tempo doing this when there's other stuff for me to worry about. But um, oh yeah, they could just retreat this way too. So this doesn't fundamentally change anything other than my knight's trapped now. Um, and I can't defend this square so easily. So if the silver moves, I can consider bishop drop back here again. Um, depending where the silver moves to. Right, so he's going to defend against that bishop drop yet again. Um... So I think now I place my bishop where I've been intending to for a very long time. So now we hit this center as well as hit this pawn. Um, I mean, yes, I want my other bishop supporting some sort of attack over here. Um, But I think I have to strike this as well. So if the gold moves, I could consider bishop drop back here. Right. So they just play as if I haven't done anything. Um, So I'm threatening in some way bishop drop five five. Um also bishop four five. Also, I don't even know. Like, there's got to be a zillion things I'm threatening here. Um, maybe even sacrificing to take the silver if it's opportunistic at some point. Uh, also, rook to the center file followed by this pawn advance is a threat. Um, yeah, bishop five five allows me to consider bishop takes knight and then bishop takes silver, and I'm hitting this rook. Oh, this actually defends against a silver taking here and offers a rook exchange, like I've been trying to do for quite a while. Although, I have better than offering that. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Um, I think it's opportunistic for me to take this and just prevent them from promoting their rook. Unless they have better. A knight would be a nice addition to my army. It's not the right piece. It's not the right piece. Well, maybe it is. Okay, we're going to do this and probably regret it later. So preventing them from promoting right now does have some value. We're giving back the material that was sacrificed earlier. Um, but now their knight is trapped. I can't do that. I cannot do that. Uh, their knight is trapped. We have stopped the promotion. I cannot Nifu. Nifu would be terrible. Um, we need another plan. Okay, this is plan B. Walking straight into a bishop fork. Um, yep, that's plan B. Oh well, well, it was a nice game while it lasted. Um, I'm sure I have some initiative in spite of my ridiculous play. Um, Okay, we're going to just lean into it, pretend that this is the plan all along. It's not that bad, actually. But it could be a lot better. Okay, that doesn't make sense. I mean, yes, secretly I was hoping for this, but there's kind of a major issue with him just letting my rook roam free near his king. Um, which that major issue is immediately negated. Hmm. I thought I had this under control. Do I not? This is not in my control. Sanjibyo. I can't read for squat at the moment. So although I did anticipate that, like, yes, I can pin this bishop, he can defend this. Like, I'm just giving away a gold in addition to everything I've already given away. Um, so we're going to play my plan, but it's, I just can't read right now. I don't know what's going on. He's being stubborn and being quite good at it. Um, and I just keep giving away material. Um, I am pursuing some kind of an attack, but 
Man, this is not the most promising attack ever. I thought I would just break on the center file. This castle has been far more resilient than I imagined. And I've been so paranoid about this threat on the file there that, like, I've allowed it to override my ability to reason about these positions. Um, so, what do I do now? Um, at least I didn't Nifu. I mean, that was good. But we need to find some way to improve this position. Um, they can't really defend this pawn. I mean, they can. They can just bring up their silver to defend it. But then the silver is no longer occluding the diagonal, so I can bishop drop 5-5 five five again. Um, and then if I start pushing this pawn, I can maybe eventually pick off the knight. Okay, what's this about? Also, like, he expects me to take it, but why would I want to take that? Well, because, yeah, if I move my rook over, he just drops gold in my face. So I do want to take this. Okay, so we're capturing this pawn. All my position pieces are in strange positions at the moment. Um, yeah, the, maybe I should tuck my king in, just because like I have no idea what he's planning. Uh oh, I know now. He was threatening a bishop fork, but I saw my move was check. Um. So before some accident happens, we're going to get this king to safety. Of course, this traps my rook. But of course. Um, but yeah, I could actually move the rook up one and continue attacking. Instead of taking gold for it, I'd be getting a silver. But having some initiative right next to my opponent's king, I don't like it. Don't like it at all, but um, yeah, that initiative might help me promote my bishop somehow. Alright, so they have not elected to trap my rook yet. I guess yet is a key word there. Might be future opportunities to do so. Um, my rook really doesn't belong that far up the board. I do want to relocate it to the center file and try to force my way through on this file because there could be some profit in that. Okay, don't really have much of a choice here. Let's get my rook out of dodge. Previous moves I did consider, like I could take a gold if he placed it somewhere in that vicinity. Alright, so now he's promoted to a horse. Um... Okay, we're going to withdraw and force this gold to retreat a bit.
I mean, yeah, he could move his horse to hit my rook, and then I'd move my rook somewhere. Ultimately, I do still very much want to break on this file, but it's not practical. Alright. So against this I'd intended... Well, I could drop the rook all the way back, in fact. That's not so bad. Um, but I'd also intended to just bring the rook forward one, pick this pawn off, and see can I get through on the seventh file instead. Um... As much as I like that active plan, I don't think it works. We're going to pick the active plan anyway despite having serious reservations about it. Um, because peace activity matters quite a bit. Okay, another sacrifice. I should try to calm down and think about it. I guess the key word is try. Yeah, I just don't understand this. That gains a tempo for sure, but, um, well, okay, yeah, he got rid of my most aggressively positioned piece. That makes sense. If I were him, I'd be concerned that, like, now I've welcomed a piece to be dropped right there, but that hasn't happened yet. Also, if his, um... Horse gives chase, I can run back, and if he silver drops, I can attack the horse somehow. And or attack the silver. Oh. A knight? And that was his idea? Curious. Most curious, because I have a hard counter to this that just lights the board on fire. Um. I offer a bishop exchange, which you cannot decline, unless you've read out a lot of stuff that I have not read. Okay, yeah, we're doing this bishop exchange. So there's quite a few places I could put my bishop and my gold. Um... It is concerning that he has the correct pieces to attack Amino Castle. It is definitely concerning. 
Um, but what can I do? I can bring my king forward in the face of the attacker. I mean, yeah, you could place that piece. Really, the knight drop is just scarier than this, but, um, okay. Um, yeah, where do I retreat my rook to? I think this is the best score to retreat to. We'll make the best of this. Um, I'm debating if he bishop checks me, do I block with a knight or do I do something crazy? Like, I don't know, block at the silver or... Oh, wow. Really? This was your idea. I don't understand it. I mean, yes, you will need this square, but... Um, I see. So he intends a pawn drop at some point. Um... Okay, I will fight off everything you're trying to attack me with by putting this right in the center of the board. I can come back and pawn drop later to kick your bishop away, or silver away. Um, but for now, this is the defense I need. But also, I have this pawn drop threat. So I'm actually quite curious what my opponent's next move is. Right, so they retreat anyway. Uh, I could use a gold to strike this. Um, my gold's not useful anywhere else. How would they rebut my attack, I wonder? They intend a night drop check. Oh, well, okay, I completely missed the silver takes pawn implication here, but this pawn wasn't going anywhere anyway. Um, and if we do end up exchanging this pawn and bishop for a couple silvers, that's fantastic, actually. Okay, I've walked into yet another bishop fork. Um, this one maybe I'm better prepared for than the rest. I 
Okay, fine. Take your rook. You want a rook? You get a rook. Is that going to make you happy? I don't know. So I think we've almost restored material equilibrium. Um, I think I kind of have to take the horse, although I really want to attack. There's no way I could possibly checkmate that king. I can dream, but... That's not feasible here. So now we've got an initiative and a bishop and a silver. So the threat is right there with this guy. Um, Another threat is this drop. Wait, they have a threat. Well, they don't have a bishop. It's difficult for them to oppose my bishop. This is me saying, um, do your worst, basically. There we go. Finally, that's on the board. That's going to be my pivot point for the rest of my attack. Okay. Our opponent apparently also enjoys playing with fire. Um, there was not a need for such aggression here. Check.
Mate in 300. I'm calling it now. 300 moves or less, there's going to be a checkmate. Somebody's going to lose this game. <laughs> um, it would be better if I had more clarity on who was losing. But for now, that proclamation feels exciting. Sanjugyo Sanjugyo yeah, the most exciting thing is, like, if he had chased my bishop here, possibly that proclamation could have been wrong. Um, <sighs> because I could end up sacking the bishop for, like, two pieces out there. Oh, yeah, no, that's checkmate. My frustration finally gives way. All right, good game. Well played. Man. That's uh, doubly good for him, because I think this is a... Um, he's at a rating boundary, so he gets to rank up now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't have a mate immediately. Let's see. One oh seven. We're thinking there's something on one oh seven. How is there something on one oh seven? If I had played some other move. I wonder. It's kind of obvious. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're saying me defending against the mate threat. Um, yeah. No, that's fair. I should have seen this. Even after playing for an hour and 15 minutes, I should always spot every threat in the position uh, without any sort of issue. Um, yeah, that's just how Shogi goes. Um... 
But yeah, there should also like be something I can do. Yeah, like the running plan seems more than adequate here. Um, yeah, silver 3-3 three, three is a possibility. I think they just run. Like, I'm pretty sure this doesn't mate or come anywhere close. Um, but, yeah, no, like, I should have seen the mate threat. There's a lot of things I should have done. Um, just because I've had strong performances, let's let's go back and look at the remainder of the game. Just because in other rounds I've had decent performance, just because I can outread opponents, does not mean that I can outread every single opponent in every position. And here we've got an opponent who's also very good at reading. So just can't outread them in everything, particularly if I keep dropping material to bishop forks. Um, so, like, yeah, this is an interesting idea. I'm not totally sold on this idea. Hmm. I'm not completely sold on it, but um, it certainly does have its merits. <laughs> sure looks fun though. Uh, like, yeah, this certainly threatens to break through on the eighth file. Um, what else is there? Oh, yeah. I suppose I forgot to develop all of my pieces. Um, yeah. Well, Nimue has an opinion. Um, I think Shogi's complicated, and I think there's room for sacrifices in quite a few positions. It's not like chess. Um, I should have taken the knight. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I knew there was something I was missing. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. I've never done this before, but it makes a lot of sense. Um, that now I get a promoted bishop that maybe can attack, maybe can defend. Uh, I forget uh, it was this position or some other, but I seriously consider this sack, um, it actually looks uh, quite good, um, yeah. So they still get this annoying check-in because I pushed my center pawn. Like, they really understood uh, this position far better than I understood it. I managed to read things out and keep the game going for a long time, but my opponent had a better intuition or something for a better understanding of this. Yes, yeah, so I just go back here. And you promote, and, like, we have a game. And it's okay. It's like, this is a threat. Um... Uh... Now my bishop can only go to seven nine. Oh, you're saying this bishop? Uh, well, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? I think we just go here anyway. Uh, hmm. Ah, uh, Shogi is complicated. Mm -hmm. 
so I guess if I do this, like, I'm fine, right? Yeah. So I think this is possibly the key combination I had to understand and missed. Um, and that if pieces exchange, then suddenly I'm attacking this pawn and that pawn, and I can start dropping things on my opponent's third rank. Um, I'm not sure if it's enough to mate, but yeah. Um... So, okay, uh, what might you play here, I wonder? Okay, so, oh, ah, nice, uh, so, yeah, this looks fun. Let's just burn everything down. Yeah, well, I haven't even done a material count. What I'm counting is that his king is right there. And I want to win the king. Um, so, yeah, this looks challenging. I mean, maybe somehow they save it. I don't know. Yeah, my rook being all the way back where it is is not very fun. Uh, yeah, nice. Somehow he's got the very active position. For 53, why not just bishop 5 5? Okay, yeah, let's take a look. Um. So, what's possible here, I wonder? Um, I think to, yeah, uh, I mean, unless somebody has a very strong opinion and has read stuff out, I don't know that guessing moves is going to help us here. Oh, he cheated with the computer, no wonder he came up with the move, but still, I don't get this. Is this good? Like, I don't understand. How is this good? I don't see the point here. Um, I'm missing something. Because he says his computer found something. So, like, we take this pawn. I and mean, we have to take... If he does this pawn drop, we have to take there. Bishop 7, 9. I mean, uh, okay. How we... <laughs> uh... Yeah, he doesn't have the bishop in the end. So, we're not dropping things to a fork again. Um, well, what's the material count? Uh, material count is they've got a couple generals for my bishop. Um, well, so this is coming. Like, do I have a response to this? I was a bit concerned about that. So, like, this seems like a problem. I mean, yes, we can swing, but... I mean, so now he's getting his dragon and hitting my king. Should I be concerned? Um, 
I guess what I learned from this is that spending one more to move to complete the castle would have uh, eventually been a very good thing. Um, maybe this is okay, and I did consider it during the game. But I don't understand it. Um, um, oh, and B, Bishop 2 3. So 2 3 is over here. After his pawn push, did he do a pawn push this game? Um,. Oh, I guess we're talking about this pawn push. I don't even know which pawn push we're talking about. This pawn push? Okay, we're talking about something. We'll figure out soon enough what it is that we're referring to. Um... But, yeah, I think this position's pretty complicated either way. Even if somehow it's fine for me to sacrifice some material back. Um, ultimately, I think um, I should have finished my castle and not... Uh, dropped this pawn, this one over here. Um, I'm not sure anything else I did in the game really mattered. But yeah, this pawn drop was super slow, took my pawn out of hand, and I should have brought my king into the castle instead. Um, I'm not so sure. Like, I got to attack, uh, so I think it was okay. Uh, certainly it changed the flow of the game. But sometimes I think it's okay to leave the pawn. Um, I just need to be way more cautious than I was and not walk into so many forks. Um, okay, well, so let's go back up. So this is the position here, or you're suggesting that I need to push this, and I'm thinking, you know, I think it's okay for me to attack first here if I play very actively. Um, it's certainly risky. Um, but, yeah, like, I'm not so convinced that this pawn is going to destroy me, especially if I haven't pushed my king to 2-8 yet. Um, I'm more than willing to chance this sort of encounter again. Because, like, they haven't castled very much either, and there's got to be some way I can play actively to make up for the fact that they can, like, attack on this edge kind of effectively. Whatever. I don't think about Shogi that way. So, I mean, yeah, that's fine.
Yeah, I think if I just found some way to activate my pieces, like, this is not the end of me. And this is quite a commitment on my opponent's part, too. We saw this kind of a reversal happen as I started to pick open the second and third files. And they had some challenges to, like, figure out what it is they needed or wanted to defend. Yeah. I'm not really sure what more to look at. But, um... I'm pretty sure this lemon slowed down my entire attack. Yeah, this thing. Um, it almost caused me to Mifu later. Um, like, this position's great. Killer Ducky can say what he wants to about, like, oh, this is so easy for my opponent to attack me on the edge now that I've let that happen, but I don't think it's so simple. I think here I should... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Also, with the king castling, castling that side, an edge attack is do uh, risky. Also, with me applying pressure elsewhere and attack is risky. Um, mid rank edge king. Yeah, I've thought about that. Like, this sort of thing. Um, I wonder what attacks and what castles work well together. Um, so like here we had played the silver out here and then back. We had played this, I mean, yeah. I just think there's a lot of room for innovation in Shogi. Yeah, no, that's a possibility. Um, uh, no, this, like, immediately leaves weaknesses behind. So, like, you have to deal with this immediately. Um, Yeah, in abstract, it makes sense. I just, I just don't know if you can push all nine pawns and defend against uh, every possible drop. But um, yeah, no point taken. Like. Uh, you were kind of aiming for pushing on all sides of the board, which seems kind of exciting. Oh, welcome. Yeah. Um, this game was complicated. I really don't have a sense for when things happened. I do know, like, the one thing... I ended up dropping a pawn on this seventh file... And later I needed the pawn in hand, and I wanted to place the pawn up here on the seventh file instead, and it just, like, my entire attack slowed down. And I walked into numerous bishop forks, um, although each time I got an initiative for it, so it was okay. But yeah, I, my attack was just way too slow, um, and now everybody's telling me what I did wrong, um, but I'm not so convinced.
Um, so like here he's saying he could have built High Mino by also doing this attack on the other wing of the board while also ignoring my attack in the center. I'm like, you have to make some compromise here. You don't get everything. Uh, it's not so simple. Um... Yeah. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. So I'm not really sure what else we're super interested in looking at here. Um, I think I just need to study a bit more, watch some more high-level games, get some more ideas, and maybe have more things to apply next time because um, I tried applying as many things I could think of with this 8th file and 7th file rook, like opposing rook, I wanted to break this open, but never did an opportunity present itself where it made sense. Then I wanted to break open the 7th file, but then that never made sense either, so I tried to break in the center and that didn't work. Um, I just need to have more Joseki available to me, and that way I can progress my attack one way or another. Um, we had an interesting game. Yeah, that's uh, why I wanted an exchange. Um, so, I mean, we could power through the rest of the game. But yeah, I've made known my point about dropping my pawn uh, to scare away this promoted silver. This is terrible. Um, I misread something, and I don't even remember what. Uh, this felt nice, um, but really I should have spent more time at some point in this game. Just spent the one extra turn tucking my king away. Uh, did this sacrifice and walked right into the fork. So this is not super bright. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We need ideas. We need to watch high-level games. Uh, I'm repeating myself over and over, but... Maybe I should avoid walking right into bishop forks. Um, that might improve my game slightly. Um... Uh, there are just so many forks to be had here. This pawn grab was just too greedy. Yeah. Um, there's got to be so many good moves for me here. Like, maybe here I just do this directly, intending something like this. This looks reasonable. Um, I'm not sure really what he does about it. Uh, well, uh, thanks for the game. It was interesting. I'm not really sure what more to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, likewise. Uh, and good luck in the next round. Which I think is the final round. All right. So I guess we'll wrap it up there. Uh, thanks to everyone for watching. 
and we'll see you all next time.